Hey lovelies, welcome to today's video, which is Dungeons and Dragons Adventure. Let's try and sort that out of the way. Dungeons and Dragons Adventure, issue 48, we get some dice and a new playmat. Let's put the... Oh, it's double sided. Nice. Right, here we go. Let's have a quick squiz. Safety tools. Make your tabletop fun for everyone using these inclusive role playing tools. Every person who sits down at your table to play Dungeons and Dragons is different. If you're looking for a way to ensure that everyone is having a good time in a safe and comfortable environment, there are tools available to help you. Okay, so talks about hard limits, boundaries that players agree will not be crossed during the game, soft limits, um, yeah, so. So yeah, you know, I mean, it's, there's, I mean, we've got we've got a fairly liberal attitude towards our limits within our game. Certain things are definitely taboo, you know. So, racism, um, graphic sexual violence, uh, that sort of thing, um, are definitely out. Having said that. If one of the characters, we've got a bard who's a bit lusty and she likes to get it on with almost everyone. So, well, almost everyone, I say. Um, so, yeah, she she will role play that, obviously, within reason, you know. Um, and, yeah, just... Um, it's just learning because you don't know what trauma somebody might have, you know, and something... what that we might not consider to be triggering might be triggering for them. So you just need to be a little bit aware and be empathetic and understanding if that's not something that they want to do. Right, character creation B, species 11, Aracocra. Cast your eyes to the sky and you may spot these acrobatic bird-like humanoids. All they want is peace and solitude, but that's far from guaranteed in the Forgotten Realms. Okay, so this is a new character creation. Or certainly information about this species anyway. Appearance. Bird folk are, as their common name suggests, humanoids with avian features. Wizard, arcane traditions, blade singing. Wizards who embrace the ancient elven technique of blade singing can master combat in a success, combat as successfully as they manipulate the weave of magic. Okay. If you think wizards are all booksmark scholars with their heads buried in dusty tomes as they scour silent libraries, think again. There are plenty of spellcasters who choose to use their magical talents in the white hot furnace of battle. War magic. You see, I'm thinking of. For my next character, I'm thinking of going with a witch who is just out to cause trouble, really. Um, gets bored very easily and wouldn't think twice about just stabbing somebody for the fun of it. Um, that's kind of what I'm thinking, but I'm also thinking that, you know, with her um, sorcery, if, if blade song is something, then I might see if I can add that into it. So that sounds interesting. Training in war and song. Unlike most wizards, a blade singer, you gain proficiency with light armor, which includes padded leather and studded leather armor. Since this discipline requires you to 
bust a move as you deliver devastating blows. You also gain proficiency in the performance skill if you don't already have it. Elven dance in the Forgotten Realms probably has more in common with the real world sword dancers than hip hop dance. But hey, who's to say your blade singer is a traditionalist? So maybe, maybe Wushu. Right, the character background for those who like a little intrigue, whether it's as a member of a ruthlessly profiteering Zentarim or a nature preserving Emerald Enclave. Faction agent. So yeah, that could be interesting. Faction agent. Role playing a faction agent. Faction agent benefits. Five factions. You got Xantarim, Lords of Alliance, Order of the Gauntlet, Emerald Enclave, and the Harpers. Oh, Law A. Locations number fifteen. The ethereal plane. Silently stalk your prey on the material plane or travel to other connected planes using this misty conduit. No matter where you are on the Sword Coast or the wider world of Toril, you are never far away from other planes of existence. The ethereal plane overlaps the material plane and the inner planes so that every location on those planes has a corresponding location there. However, the ethereal plane is usually invisible to those on the overlapped planes, except with the aid of magic. Interaction between planes, uh, visiting the ethereal plane, creatures and encounters. Most encounters in the, uh, in the border ethereal are with creatures on the material plane whose senses or abilities extend into the ethereal plane, such as ghosts, night hags, nightmares and phase spiders. In the deep ethereal, most encounters are with other travellers, particularly elementals, genies and salamanders, plus the occasional celestial, fiend or fae. Ether cyclones also spin through the deep ethereal. These serpentine columns carry ethereal forms caught in their path for leagues, blow travellers into the border ethereal of a random plane, or hurl them into the astral plane. The Unseelie Court. Law Monsters 36. From quicklings and darklings to twig blights and boggles, a trip to the gloaming court introduces a host of new and unusual creatures. Boggles. When an intelligent being feels isolated or abandoned in a place where the Feywild touches the world, a boggle is born. Boggles lurk, waiting to frighten and bedevil folk with their pranks, although mischief, not mayhem or actual harm, is usually the intent. A boggle can excrete a non-flammable oil from their pores, making this oil sticky or slippery to hamper its foes. It can also create magical openings to travel short distances or to pilfer items that would otherwise be beyond its reach. That's a handy thing to have. Darklings, twig and tree blights, quicklings and yeth hounds. Hobgoblins, see how a noble culture of martial valour can easily be corrupted to evil by the goblin god Maglubriet. A member of the goblinoid family alongside goblins and bugbears, hobgoblins are known among the humanoid creatures of the Forgotten Realms for the militarism. If there's a stereotype of hobgoblins, it's that they are a warrior people. Cool. Bad attitude, I suppose. Enemy hobgoblins in combat. Hobgoblins who follow the divine martial law of Magluviet organize themselves in highly regimented legions with bloody names like leg breakers, skull smashers, or flesh renders. Fair enough. Um, hobgoblin legions. 
encounters and playing as a hobgoblin. So yeah, and inspirations. Plenty to get you to look into there. Deals in the deep encounter. Uh, there are many strange creatures within the Underdark, both native and visiting. One such travelling creature is a night hag peddler named Nettie Knucklebones. She travels the plains selling her wares, but does not ask for coin in exchange. Instead, she thrives on suffering. She forces her customers to relieve, relive their darkest memories and bottles their emotions for use in her potions. Well, she sounds like a very pleasant person to get to know. So, night hags, dealing with Nettie, what Nettie knows. And then we've got stat blocks. Stat blocks for Hobgoblin Iron Shadow, a silent mage. Wow, a quickling, a night hag, ray of enfeeblement, Second level necromancy and then night hag items, heartstone and soul bag. And then we have pipes of haunting. So these are items, pipes of haunting, restorative ointment, wings of flying, Heward's handy haversack. Oh, I. This backpack has a central pouch and two side pouches, each of which is extra dimensional space. Each side pouch can hold up to 20 pounds of material, not exceeding a volume of two cubic feet. The large central pouch can hold up to eight cubic feet or 80 pounds of material. The backpack weighs five pounds, regardless of its contents. Okay. Stone of good luck, luck stone, wondrous item, uncommon, requires achievement. While this polished agate is on your person, you gain a plus one bonus to ability checks and saving throws. That's handy. So we have a new character sheet here for Rerak, wizard. He's a faction agent, Aracocra. Alignment is blank, uh, but level four. Blade Singer. So, there we go. That's what our new character looks like. Spell save DC 13. Spell attack bonus is 5. Cool. Right. So, a quick look at our mat. So, this looks like they're one inch squares, which is nice. Um, it would have been nice that the maps we got previously, uh, in a couple of issues back, had one inch squares so this is nice this looks like it's um, got different chambers we've obviously got a some sort of chasm with potentially a river going through it there's a bridge these look like voids chasm voids maybe and then we've got this side there is a small building here um, small building on that side so I wonder if this could be put together with the other map that we have let me have a look Shall we turn? Don't go anywhere. Ah, here we go. No, that's fine. Bam. Yeah, here you go. Right, here we go. So we have, we had this map previously. No, I don't think so. No, that's a shame. Uh, it's a slightly different size for starters. Um, yeah, no. Yeah, that's a shame. It would have been nice to be able to put them together. Okay, all right. 
forget that. Forget what I said. So, there we go. There's our two sides. Right. And let's bring you down and we'll have a look at some dice, shall we? So these are... What does it say in the thing about that? It's uh, comes with a double-sided map featuring two more atmospheric under dark locations. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 so. so there you go. They're not too bad. They don't look too bad. That's what they look like. D20. Oh, that was a 1, 4, 12, 8, 8, 10, 12, and that was on the floor. Oh, well, never mind. Right. So, there we go. There's our issue for this week um hopefully you'll join me in the next video all right take care bye bye